Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. I just realized the mute was the the mic was still muted. Welcome to Woolen Spinning. This is episode 157. I'm just gonna make everything quiet on my end. Um, welcome to this place. Welcome to um, Woolen Spinning. I hope you are having a wonderful, a wonderful day. There we go. A wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. Uh, we are um, in the midst of a beautiful morning, beautiful morning. And um, we actually went up to Manning Park yesterday, which is um, about two hours from here, hour and 45, almost two hour drive. And it just really feels like you're, you've just completely left the world, you know, like you've really, um, um, exited the city, exited the urban, exited just all the things, you know, and, um, yeah, it was really nice. We went on quite a long hike. It was seven and a half kilometers. So not too long for adults, but good, a good distance for, for kids. And, uh, yeah, we had a really good time. So how is everybody? How is Tour de Fleece going? So Tour de Fleece, uh, started on, um, I guess it was Saturday that we kicked off. So today is Sunday, June 28th. And um, we uh, people are already spinning up a storm. So in the Ravelry group, we've got a thread for uh, Team Woolen Spinning. So if you would like to be a part of Tour de Fleece and you're looking for a team, please head on over, especially if you're... If you haven't um, sort of interacted with our community yet and you're looking to kind of dip your toes in and meet some people, it's a great opportunity to do that. And then on uh, the Slack channel, everybody's just been like, you know, sharing up a storm, which is awesome. And if you are part of the Team Wool and Spinning on Slack, uh, make sure that you're going to hashtag TDF2020, um, which is one of the channels. So it's on the, on your um, right, left-hand side on your device, just click the plus button for channels and look for TDF2020. And if you can't find it, just post in the general, in the hashtag general or hashtag random and people will help you. So it's good to see everybody. Hi, Dana and Linnea and Elizabeth and Barb. Dana's here. Oh, I already said Dana, sorry. <laughs> um, Lisa, Amanda, Kelly, Karma, Kaylee, Maggie, Becca, Kelly, Erica. It's so good to see you guys. Um, Alicia, Sabella. I get to chat with you later, Sabella, um, in our queries and explorations group later this morning. It's so, so good to see you guys. So uh, thank you so much for being here. You guys are already chatting about um, um, about uh, Tour de Fleece, which is awesome. Oh, Long Thread pa uh, Podcast. Great recommendation, Barb. And she says the re most recent episode with Deborah Chandler was amazing. So good to know. Thank you. Um, if anybody, if, if people sort of, um, after interweave sold off, spin off and hand woven and all that, that those publications to long thread media, if you don't sort of know about that website, um, look up long thread media and it's just, their website's just a, a, a wealth of information. So, uh, do, um, have a look at their, at what they're doing over there. So we have our ongoing yarn substitution content, uh, in um, on patreon.com slash well for pearls. If you're interested in learning more about yarn substitution, both, both substituting yarn you've already spun and into a knitting pattern, but also spinning to replace yarn in a knitting pattern. Um, this content is for you. Now, July's content is made. Um, I haven't, gotten it all scheduled and ready to go just yet, but it is made and it's ready to go. Um, so August's content will be, um, one big long sort of how I spin vlog. It'll be all of the vlogs put together and bookmarked so that you, you can sort of skim through to where you want to go to what you want to watch. It'll be kind of like a movie, um, with some, uh, resources, just, um, sort of like, a you know, cheater PDF, if you will, with some stuff, with some information in there. And then for the attentive spinners, you guys will get the, um, transcript all in one document for those who like to have things in one place, as well as the download that, um, is available for, um, everybody who subscribes to the co-executive producer tiers and higher. So, uh, that's coming up in August and that will finish off our yarn, su yarn substitution content. Our queries and explorations group will continue on and, uh, and continue to sort of look at what you guys want to do right now. We're, we're looking at spinning, um, consistency and intentionality and, um, you know, how to put a specific amount of twist into our, into our yarn, which is what we're working on later today. 
And, uh, and then in September, we're going to get into some breed and color studies and what I did with my breed and color studies. So if you're interested in learning more about how I spin and what that content kind of looks like, um, how I spin in capital letters, so it's like a, it's a thing, um, do head on over to patreon.com slash wellforpearls. Now, I haven't really been very faithful about doing a newsletter, but you can subscribe at wellforpearls.com. And the How I Spin a Sock Study, the ebook. It was being offered as a special offer and that sort of expired, we finished off. So anybody who is a patron paying $5 or more per month, you can access that free download by checking the links in the show notes, which are available um, in the links. When Once the show goes live, I'll put the link for the episode notes down below in the show notes um, here on, on YouTube and you can connect to them um, via page. Um, it'll take you over to Patreon and the links to get that uh ebook for free um, is there. So just follow the links. Same with our unbraided to get to to go to Katrina's um, shop craftyjacks.ca to purchase the ebook of unbraided or the um, or to order a physical copy online. There's also links to order the physical copy of um, a sock study online as well. And that comes directly from blurb. It's hard to get into Tour de Fleece without uh, Tour de France to watch at the same time. You know, it's funny you would say that, Jean, because I was wondering if people would be struggling with that a little bit as well. I've never watched Tour de France very much. I've, I've only ever kind of um, watched the highlights, but I was wondering if people would be kind of feeling that. I'm just looking at the chat, make sure I don't miss anything. If you guys have specific questions or you're wondering about specific things, don't hesitate to uh, tag me. When you're writing in chat, you can say at Rachel Smith and then it'll come up in bright highlight orange and um, then I won't miss it because sometimes with the questions, I do miss them. So uh, don't hesitate to do that. All right, I'm trying to keep up with chat on my phone at the same time because we're gonna move over to the other camera and it's a little bit hard to see chat over here sometimes. So, uh, oh. Now I've lost my chat though. There we go. Okay, so we've got some community participation stuff and we've got some, uh, I've got an announcement to make for Braden Color Studies. So let's do that and then we'll run the, um, the uh, intro credits and we'll get into the show. So just before we do that, breed and color studies, Katrina and I are on track to have the links up for you to access ordering on July 15th. So on July 15th, we will post times in Pacific Daylight Time and we will post links. Um, on July 1st, Woolen Spinning Radio will be released uh, per usual, but it will be released for all patrons. So please look for the episode. It's going to come up at like 2 a.m. on July 1st. Um, so it should hit everybody sort of relatively early in the day. Not that you need anything right on that day. You've sort of got like, you don't have to watch, you don't have to listen to it right on July 1st. But it introduces the breed that we've chosen, which is really exciting. And there will be photos in the post of the photo that we chose and the um, fiber that came of it. So this is gonna be a carded study. We're gonna be looking at carded fiber and spinning um, from a carded prep as well as color management from a, a carded prep. And um, July 15th, we'll be ordering. So the first hour of when the links go live on craftyjacks.ca, the first hour, you will have to put in a password, which will be in the um, post. There will be two posts. One will have the ordering link. The other one will have the Patreon password for all patrons of the show. You will put in the password within that first hour, and then it will take you to the site with an automatic discount. You don't have to worry about a discount code. It will automatically generate for you within that first hour. After that, there will be no discount and it will just be open for everybody. So if you are not a member of, of Woolen Spinning in the Patreon community, um, that's totally fine. We would love for you to still participate. And all you have to do is uh, just wait um, till that next hour and then it'll be open for everybody. And we're hoping that, um, and, you know, it was quite well managed last time. Um, Katrina feels like she's kind of figured out the appropriate, the right amount of numbers um, for everybody. So it... Um, you know, there, there should be stuff left over for sure and, and, and for uh, people to be able to order who aren't a part of the Patreon community. And that's, that's wonderful because we want everybody to, to join. So, um, yeah. 
I know. <laughs> Erica is so funny. I don't know how you keep such exciting secrets. I don't think I could do it. I know it's hard sometimes actually to not just be like, this is what we're studying and these are the colors and I have to uh, keep it under wraps a little bit. I am also waiting for um, Katrina to send me photos of the um, of what we're spinning. So I am kind of waiting on those so that I can do all the things and show you all the things. So next week's show, I'll have photos and I'll have the um, breed. So, because um, the Woolen Spinning Radio episode will be out and you guys will be able to um, see everything. So. Awesome. All right, let's run the credits and then we'll do part community participation. So community participation, our book club, we have our last meeting for Pride and Prejudice coming up. If you would like to participate, um, that is with Becca, who is at Bethy 40 She's in the chat today, Rebecca Roy. Um, so we're finishing up Pride and Prejudice. I don't know what we're going to be studying next and what book we're going to be looking at. We are also looking at How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram Kendi. And um, we're just figuring out dates for July to meet for uh, discussion and coming together for that separate book club. So there's like our, um, right now we've been kind of looking at some Jane Austen books. So there's that. And then there's our other um, commitment to um, racism, anti-racism work and um, being aware, being more aware of the what's going on in terms of social justice and the social justice movements and civil rights movements um, all over the world. It's not just in the States, it's happening in Canada and other countries as well. Um, so that's kind of separate. So if you would like to participate in one, but not the other or in both, um, you are more than welcome. And that's in the Slack channel, hashtag books, books, books. And I've, I've put it in the show notes. Our Made With Love Along. So this is Glenda's project. Um, this is her anchors cardigan. And um, she said this is um, made out of Crafty Jack's Boutique Fabulicious yarn. And it was lovely to work with, she says. So she's finished. Um, I was chatting with her about it in Spin Group. And she was saying that she really, really likes it. She loves the yarn. The colorway that she chose is beautiful for the Made With Love Along. Um, she said that her last sweater, she, she knit it a little bit on the smaller side. So she thinks she overcompensated a tiny bit for... Um, this size for this sweater and it's a little bit too big but when she tried it on and showed all of us um, we all thought it looked awesome so really well done um, she got hers done way quicker than I did mine is actually in the background here so yesterday on our big long drive um, because I had about four hours to knit I actually was able to finish the body so I'll share that with you guys later because it's a little bit too far away for me right now to share with you. But I'm doing it also on Fabulicious. And I've got the one of a kind um, colorway, which was number 50. And um, yeah, I finally finished the body. <laughs> it's taken forever. So, you know, in some ways it's funny because our Made With Love Along, it's running from, it ran from, uh, what, what was our dates? April 1st through till July 31st. And um, I'm halfway, I'm, I'm about a third of the way down the first sleeve and um, I'll get it done by the end of July for sure because the sleeves are going quite a bit faster but it's funny because I thought for sure that I wouldn't get them done and I thought for sure I wouldn't be able to get the sweater done in time but now that I've got the body done it's like oh okay I can do this <laughs> and it's finally starting to cruise so um, I'm really enjoying the yarn and actually I because I had sort of wanted to really just enjoy the spin and really just kind of, you know, or the, the spin, the knit, um, and just sort of, you know, work on it and chip away at it slowly. Um, it's, that's exactly what it's ended up being. So, and I tried it on this morning and it's, um, I wish I had done a little bit of shaping in the waist, but I'm not going to rip back and fix it. It'll be fine. Um, but it, it fits me and it, it suits my style and stuff. So I think it actually will work out quite well. Yeah, I love the color of the yarn. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's saying how much they love the color and 
The yolk is really cool, Jennifer. Yeah, it's um, it's done in one by one rib with increases, and um, I just really like the look of it, and I think that's what brought uh, Glenda's not here today, but I think that's what um, she really liked about it as well. So we both fell in love with the uh, with the project, and it's got a little bit of um, shaping at the back neck to lift up the back neck, and but it's worked in with the ribbing, and it just works really nicely. So, oh, okay, Becca. So they're going to choose the next Jane Austen uh, book by Friday. I actually haven't really been able to participate in the Pride and Prejudice um, Club, which is actually too bad because it's my favorite book. But um, besides Sweetness in the Belly, if you guys haven't read that book, Sweetness in the Belly, it's amazing. It's my absolute most favorite book of all time. Um, besides The Root Cellar, which is, um, an, which is actually a kid's book. <laughs> um, those are my, my top three books. Um, so, oh, hi, Glenda. Um, so she is here. So, um, um, yeah, we'll be choosing the next book, and I'll let you guys know next next show. So our 51 Yarns uh, Spin Along has been going on. It's our two-year spin along. It's going from the beginning of 2019 all the way to the end of 2020 for Group A. And then Group B just started uh, back in January of this year, and they're going to be studying till the end of 22, 2022, which just seems like such a long way away like I just don't even know how we're even going to get to 2022 it just seems you know that far in the future but you know it's funny when James was born and he was born in 2012 and he was going to be going to kindergarten in 2017 and I thought oh my goodness we're never going to get to 2017 there's no way here we are 2020 you know and I remember thinking in the September of 2017 as he trudged off into kindergarten I just thought oh my goodness like we're here already this is just unbelievable and then same with Nora 2019 September I was like I didn't think we would ever get here like and it's not to wish time away it's just being aware of like these milestones that we go through and that we yeah that that happened it's just amazing so this is Rebecca um you guys all know Rebecca because she was here on the show back in March when she was visiting from Rankin Inlet which is in Nunavut up in northern um, Canada um so she's part of group A spinning so these are um three of her yarns so butt to tip tip to butt and be kind rewind so this was May and June um the um the yarns that we were making. So um, Rebecca says, at first I thought all of these were the same, were completely the same, but coming back to the pictures after a few day days, I do see that the rewound re swatch, which is the one that's at the top, is the most neat and even. Spinning singles from the butts was much more desirable an experience as spinning from the tips was squeaky and my spinning was uneven. Applying from the butts made for a smoother yarn, but it all kind of came out in the knitting. Wondering if a different fleece, this is Shetland with damaged butts and tips that I flicked off, would have more dramatic differences. I don't know, Rebecca, but your spinning is just beautiful. And I love the, uh, um, the heathering of the uh, fleece. Beautiful. And I think she has a whole, maybe you guys... Um, um, we'll remember, we'll, we'll remember. Cause I think that she posted about it in this, it was either the Slack channel or on, on Ravelry. Um, I feel like for her tour to flee, she's got an entire spin of this, but I think she blended it with alpaca, but I might be wrong. Cause she's, um, she's a, um, a United Church of, sorry, not United Church. That's me. Um, she's an Anglican Church of Canada minister, her and her husband. So they're actually, they've got church this morning, which is part of the reason why I want to move the stream to Saturdays going forward. I'm um, not specifically just for Rebecca, but I know there's a lot of people that participate in faith communities on, um, Sunday mornings. And, uh, um, because we do as well, um, I would like to move the stream to Saturday morning. So that will be happening sometime in August going into September. Um, it's just with uh, home learning and school and my work, well, the lack of school and my um, work schedule and whatnot, we sort of ended up on Sunday mornings, but it's it's not ideal for most, for a, lo for a lot of people. I know it's not everybody, but I know for a lot of people, it's not ideal. So group B, this is Linnea, who's actually in the chat as well. Um, she did a Gotland. So group B has been, they're, they're sort of back at the beginning still of the book. Um, this is the book by J.C. Boggs Faulkner, 51 Yarns to Spin Before You Cast Off. Um, she, 
um, the Group B started in January. So if you would like to do a 51 yarns um, spin along yourself and, and do a study, it's not too late to join Group B. Um, they looked at wool classification for the first few months and now they're looking at some of the different types of yarns out there. So Linnea was looking at her true woolen yarns. So she was looking at a Gotland Texel lamb fleece. I think this was a fleece, right? Um, and she said she got this fleece from a Danish farmer. It has been a joy all the way. It has taken a bit more time because if I wanted to make a true woolen, I had to prep the wool myself as I mostly have commercial comb top in my stash. So I washed and dried the fleece. And Linnea, remind me where you are again, because are you in Denmark? I'm pretty sure you're in Denmark. I can't remember if you're in Denmark or Sweden. Um, so she would have gotten a local to her. This is local to her, a Danish farmer. Um, the nice locks made me feel that I had to do some teasing, then hand carding with roll legs as best as I could. She spun it with a supported long draw and she really enjoyed it. She plied it into a two ply yarn, but she thinks she added too much twist in the ply. Um, I think it looks beautiful actually, Linnea. Um, but you're the one that can feel the yarn and run your hands down it and know sort of what, what the hand is. Um, she would have liked to have a bit more loft and air and she ended up with a well balanced with two well balanced skeins 10 wraps per inch so you know about sort of a DK heavy DK light light worsted probably a DK just from the look of the airiness of the yarn and a 30 degree angle she had 200 meters in all out of 150 grams which is pretty awesome and she's got 250 grams more of the fleece so she'd like to make but she would like to make a more airy yarn beautiful Linnea beautiful oh she's in Norway but she's Danish that's right I knew there was there was that connection there Linnea and I just couldn't quite remember actually Scandinavia is somewhere that Mike and I are just dying to go my parents spent a lot of time in Copenhagen and they'd been there quite a number of times and my dad had actually his dad um, my dad was born and raised in Britain during World War II and after the war, there were still Navy ships that were going um, through the Baltic. And my dad had an opportunity when he was about 12 or 14, somewhere in there, um, to go on one of the ships and sort of do an apprenticeship, if you will, under a ship's captain um, with the, the British Royal Navy. And he was able to do um, that sort of um, sailing from britain all the way up through the baltic to russia and then back and i think he was gone for like six weeks or something anyways my parents ended up repeating that trip um after as soon as they retired my dad really wanted to go back and re repeat the trip and then um of which they did and my of course it brought back a lot of memories for my dad but you know just really um they had just an incredible time um and they were gone for quite a long time and then um uh, they ended up going back actually to Copenhagen later um, and spending quite a bit of time there again. Um, yeah, it was, it's just part of the world that, that, cause we're, so my dad's family, um, we're originally, we think that from the records that we were originally Norwegian, hence my coloring, um, and that they fled from Norway, um, and changed their name to Smith when they came to Britain. Um, and, uh, so my dad actually looked very um, Scandinavian when you looked at him, um, tall, blonde hair, blue eyed. And um, <clears throat> excuse me. So he um, anyway, so it's just a part of the world that my parents ended up spending a little you know, bit of time in. And actually, Mike and I would also we're, we'd love to go to Iceland. It's a, it's another bucket list item. So uh, anyhow, just uh, near and dear to my heart. All right. So thank you so much everyone for sharing your projects and for continuing to share your projects in uh, Ravelry and on the Slack channel because I really appreciate it. And actually uh, Diane, who's not here today because she's at church, um, in the Slack channel, uh, she was sharing a recent sweater spin that she finished. And so I'm hoping that I can share that with you next week. I just want to get permission from her because she didn't post on Ravelry. Um, I don't think she's a uh, part of Ravelry. Um, so I wanted to get permission from her since she posted in the Slack channel. Okay, so let me switch around 
and I'll just push my my chair back and I thought I would share with you some of my knitted project knitting projects first um, I'll share with you my um, made with love along project which is my anchors cardigan really quickly and um, I'll share with you I did get started on my tour de fleece spinning so I thought we would share that and I do have a little bit of finished wool um, wool some finished yarn <laughs> to share with you. Um, the reason why I rolled my eyes when I said wool is because one of the skeins is, is wool, but the other one isn't, which is so unusual for me. So um, I'll just switch the cameras and I'll push my chair back. And we also need to move the microphone. So without making too much noise for you guys. Right, so you guys can see me here okay, I think. I, I, I'm really thankful, you guys, for the feedback that I got um, on the, the camera setup um, from last show. Um, thank you so much, because it is more work to set up cameras in different ways. But if you guys um, don't mind sort of the slight pause and setting things up a little, a little bit differently, Oh, sorry, there was just a big bang there. Um, if you guys are okay with it, then um, then I'm, I'm totally happy to do it because uh, if it makes a, a big difference with how um, you guys view the show and um, your enjoyment of the show, then I'm, then I'm more than happy to do it. So um, that's great. Thank you. And I, I don't think you guys really mind seeing the mic. You know, it's funny because some of the shows um, that I, that some of the podcasts that I watch, because I don't watch a lot of podcasts that are um, making related. Most of the shows that I watch are actually in the tech space or in the, um, I don't even know what you would call it. Like, it's not really lifestyle, but it's kind of more like, um, yeah, I don't know what some of them would, would be called. Um... Anyways, a lot of them you can see the microphones and they're using um, shotgun mics where they're actually like the mics are right here and they're talking into them and it actually blocks their face. And I don't think that you guys necessarily want that, but um, if you guys are sort of okay seeing some of the technology from the behind the scenes, it does make it a little, the audio clearer and it makes, uh, it makes it a little bit nicer for you guys. So let's talk about my projects. Um, let's start off with some knitting, um, like I mentioned, and I'll share some of this stuff with you in a few minutes. So I actually did some swatching over the um, week. I really wanted to see how this Falkland was going to knit up. And um, interestingly, you know, it's funny how things work out because I was looking at the skeins of yarn and you can see how dark it is. Like it is really quite a dark yarn and there's all of this barber pulling in it and there's the lighter, um, col that lighter sort of uh, um, sky blue that was in there from the, um, from the Three Waters Farm skein because that braid had that light, light blue in it. But you can see how much barber polling there is. Like that's a lot of barber polling. Um, and you know, I, I don't really, I used to really not like barber polling. I used to have a real problem with it. But you know, I've kind of, it's kind of, I've come round, if you will. I've come round. So I knit up a big, big, big swatch. And I did it on four millimeter and five millimeter. So if you look um, at the cast on edge, I was wondering too, how many of you guys are actually spinning while we're watching so that you can get your tour de fleece spins going? Um, I was wondering about that. So the, the, this part of the swatch up here is knit on four and a half millimeter needles. And then the top part, this part here is knit on five millimeter needles and the fabric on the five millimeter needles, is just a little bit too open and it's a little bit too, um, 
loose. I think if I was knitting a Hannah Fettig pattern or something like that, that style of design where the fabric is knit really open, really loose, lots of drape, like the featherweight cardigan, for example, I think I would sort of find a pattern to fit um, this, um, that more open gauge. But you can see how when I really push, you can see that I can like push my finger, like you can actually see my finger. And um, I just, um, it's just not a, not a really great fabric, but the four and a half millimeter fabric is really quite nice. Now, I don't know exactly how much I have for yardage, so um, I do need to sort of skein the, re skein these and figure that out because I think I have about 600, maybe 700 yards, maybe a little bit more. Um, but there's been some great cropped sweaters um, that sort of come down to like, my natural waist is here. Um, I'll just move over a bit, is right here. And it's 10 inches from underarm to waist. And I was actually looking at one yesterday. Uh, the designer is Carrie, but I can't remember her last name and I can't remember what the pattern's called. The Ring Tee? It's on sale right now. Anyways, she... Um, I, I bought the pattern because it was on sale. It was an early release and uh, it's very size inclusive and there's four different versions. So there's a deep V, a shallower V, and then four different crop lengths. So I thought what a great pattern for um, some of the hand spun that I've, that I've spun. And I was thinking my West Coast color that I shared back uh, in the winter um, that was in that Pantone, that teal Pantone color, I actually thought it would be perfect because it's a DK that's called for in the pattern. So I, I wanted to swatch this up before I put this yarn away, which is why I'm telling you all of this, um, to just sort of have a record of how this yarn will knit up and what the striping will look like. And then I can sort of keep my eye open for an appropriate pattern that will work. So, oh, Sarah's spinning. And it looks like Marla's spinning and Alicia's spinning. Uh, Lauren was, but now she's, she got pulled away into the kitchen. Aw, Eva's spinning, Karma's spinning, Bridget's combing, uh, Maggie is spinning. Oh, thank you, Maggie. Thank you. Uh, you know, I was actually thinking this would be a really nice yarn for um, a shifty or a night shift, the background, and it would go through the whole thing in the background. Um, but I have so much yardage that I sort of want to like use it all up in one project. That would be the plan anyhow. So I actually did make, oh, Amanda's spinning and Jennifer is spinning. Oh no, you're opening locks, Jennifer, awesome. Tamara is spinning BFL silk. I love it when you guys are spinning and working on Tour de Fleece. Tour de Fleece is such a, it's such a great event in our spinning community, you know, like it happens once a year and, um, you know, it's just, it really brings us together and I think it's just such a, such a great, um, it's such a great event and I'm glad that it has continued. Um, let me just zoom in. Oh, wrong, wrong way. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can really see this fabric. Okay, so this is my, my Velcour by um, uh, Andrea Mowry. And I have continued to work on it. And I'm actually, I, I was sort of down here last time when I chatted with you guys. I was sort of around here. And I've actually been able to do about three inches. Um, I've just been very slowly, you know, chipping away at it. There's no deadline. Um, I've been really enjoying it. Um, this is my Pasuta that was um, Katrina's colorway, uh, Crafty Jack's um, colorway Pasuta. I did this in a three-ply fractal. And then um, I'm, hold, I'm doing um, the contrast color as a commercial, um, tough, her Tough and Tender, which is a Targi nylon base um, in this great ocean colorway. And I was looking for a pattern. I've mentioned this on the podcast before. I wanted a colorway that you would be able to see the movement of the um, the fractal through the fabric, and that's exactly what's happening. You can see how it moves from the brown, and then there's the 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 heathering and the marling, the color twisting, as it transitions to blue and then back to brown. And you can actually see. I know it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, um, but you can see the marling and the color twisting as the colors move through. 
And that was, so on the pattern, there's actually a third color that creates like a grid that goes across. And so you end up with sort of this great like grid-like sort of patterning um, in the garter. And I omitted that because I really just wanted to focus on the movement. And actually I have to say, <laughs> I love the back side. Isn't that so cool? The wrong side. You can really see the movement of the colors. So, oh yeah, thank you, Lane. I'm assuming it's the Velcro that you love. So thank you. Yeah, it's a really cool sweater. Now my gauge is a little bit off, which I mentioned. So the body is a little bit bigger than, um, than called for in the pattern. I'm knitting the smallest size, which is supposed to be 38 around, and this is gonna work up to be more like 40. I did measure it. Um, my next sort of step, if you will, is to knit a little bit further on the body, and then I'll put it on a big, big, big cable, and I'll put it on my dress form be behind me. And I'll just make sure that there's not too much ease. I think it's gonna look really cute with a um, white, um, uh, tank top underneath that's a little bit longer and then this would be over top. Um, I thought that would be really cool and I'm just going to knit until I run out of hand spun so it might be a little bit longer than is called for in the pattern and I think that would be fine. It's funny because yesterday on our hike it was really cold and it was quite miserable and um, the weather was really quite terrible and I was wearing shorts because it was warm enough for shorts, but it was like a little bit chilly. Like I had goose pimples on my legs for part of the time and there was a bit of a wind. We were a little bit further north and um, it was it was kind of funny because I was, um, as I was walking, I was like, you know, this is one of those situations. I had a sweatshirt on um, and I was like, this is a situation where I don't really need sleeves. Um, I need something like this where it's it just keeps your trunk warm and then you've got your rain jacket over top because we had to wear rain jackets because it was pouring rain. Um, so it's kind of one of those things where I was like, yeah, I can see this kind of gap in my in my wardrobe right now of like actually kind of needing something like this. So then I was really thankful that I hadn't ripped it out. So... Oh, take care, Erica. So she finished her, her repeat on her uh, Damask. So she's off to hang out with the family. It's really good to see you, Erica. I've been missing you. We uh, usually chat weaving and we haven't been doing that lately because it's been so busy. Perfect sweater for hand spun. I totally agree, Dana. Yeah. Now, my... I left it downstairs, but I've actually been doing a whole bunch of spindle spinning. So I've been working away. I'm not going to take it out of the bag, but I've been working away on my spinning socks six, six pack from Sweet Georgie Yarns. And honestly, it is probably six years old, that project. But I've been working away at it and I've been taking it to the park every night. And uh, I've actually been really thankful that I've that I've had it. Um, so I... Um, um, yeah, it's it's been it's been a real lifesaver. I've been doing it on my Bosworth spindles, and um, I have I have two and a half more bumps left because I've got this this bump to spin. Um, each of them were one ounce little packs in different colorways, and um, I have uh, this. I've, I'm working on the third one right now, and then I've got two and a half more to go, and um, I'm hoping to get it done this summer, and then I'll ply it do a combo ply of the, 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 the different colorways. So I'll end up with three, uh, two different kind of colorways, if you will, two different yarns, and then hopefully two pairs of socks, fingers crossed. But I've been taking it to the park every night and it's been really fun to work on actually. Um, I've been carrying it, I, the, my, my Bosworth spindle small enough to fit in my um, fanny pack that I carry with the kids because I want my hands free when I've got the kids. If I had to grab them, you know, if they went out into into the road or if something happened, I want to be able to grab the kids and have my hands free. So, um, anyways, I, uh, yeah. Um, oh, you guys lost audio. Oh no, everybody else is okay. Just, um, hit refresh. Um, so anyways, I've been, I've been spinning away and doing that. So it's been really, really special. So, uh, this is my Odyssey shawl. So this is going to be gifted to my sister-in-law, um, who just lost, um, her mom. Um, it's been a tough spring for my brother and his family. So I dyed this in cochineal and, um, 
uh, cochineal and uh, kibraka. And so I've been, I'm on the third colorway. So I think Eva, who I'm not sure if she's here today, she had um, uh, seen that I was going to be working on this and she knit hers already. So I'm, I'm catching up, Eva. I'll get there. Um, this is the pattern. You make a hole, which is so fantastic. And um, you've got all these increases and decreases, which are so, so, so cool. And, uh, and then you've got the garter again, and then, and then um, the, the third lace panel. So I've got two of them done. My stitch gauge is way off. So I'm knitting on six millimeter needles. Um, this was my Gotland Romney fleece. And I've got some of it left that I haven't processed. So actually, I think I'm gonna use it for um, a prize. Um, I'll divide it up into two batches and we'll we'll send one out for the Made With Love Along and we'll send one out for Tour de Fleece um, to gift it forward because this is really amazing, amazing fleece and it would be fun to kind of gift it gift it forward. Um, so I, I had to modify the stitches quite a lot. I talked about it quite a bit in last show, so I won't go into it now, but I'm almost kind of getting to the point where I'm ready to do the final lace pad panel. I'm getting to the end of the final skein. And then I thought actually because I have, um, oh yeah, Eva, please do. She's gonna slow, show hers in the Slack channel um, because yeah, I'd love to see it, Eva. Um, because I've got enough of the two other colors left, I think what I'll do at the bottom of the shawl is a couple of rows each of garter just to kind of have a little bit of striping at the bottom to use them up a little bit more and then I'll cast off. So uh, I'm hoping to finish this in the next couple of weeks because my brother and sister are actually away right now. And um, I would really, really, really like to give this to them um, when I send my nephew's birthday present. So I was gonna put it all together in one package. And you can see how massive it is. It's just absolutely humongous. <laughs> so Katie will love that. So that is that project. Um, I've got all this stuff here to show you guys. So I don't want to move the, my um, one camera around just yet to show you my uh, Made With Love Along. So I'll show you my, my Tour de Fleece spin instead. So I have shown this yarn quite a bit on the podcast. This is my Frisian, um, which is a uh, German dairy sheep and available here locally. They do very well in Canada. This was my, my swatch. You can see how dark it is. It's really, really hard to show on the show. Um, and uh, I knit three different needle sizes. This is for the Shore cardigan, um, which is a, a, a pattern by Carrie Bostick Hogue. And actually, I'll, I'll hold it up here. No, it's just as dark. <laughs> so I had carded up all the things. Um, I sent Allison her bat that she won last month in the um, May giveaway. And for June, pop into the June episode thread and tell us what you're thinking about and what you're working on. And... Um, Depending on how much spinning I get done, I might send another one of these out. Um, so I'm just going to spin away. I've got my wheel set up here. I'm spinning long draw. If you guys would like to spend some time next show um, seeing how I spin and how I'm spinning this fiber, um, we can do that for sure. Um, so that is that my Tour de Fleece spin. So I'm just going to spin until I have... Um, about a thousand yards of yarn. I've already got about 400 yards done and I'll spin until I have about a thousand yards and then I'm actually going to start knitting um, because I don't want to have a ton of leftover yarn and um, if I need to spin some more I will um, but I just I don't want to have tons and tons and tons and tons of yarn and you can see like these are all of the bats in here. This is all of the fiber carded up. So I would love to pay it forward a little bit and give some more bats away. Yeah. Oh, what color besides cochineal? Yes, you were, you're right, Kelly. It was Kibraka. Um, and it doesn't, it's not super soft, actually. It's funny, because of the Gotland Romney, it's a little bit coarse. Um, and it's got a bit of tooth to it, but it's super warm. So um, I'm really happy with how it came out and uh, how it how it worked out. So I've been working on some silk from Sanjo Silk, which is a local silk weaving studio and company local to me. So this is Tassa Brick. 
that I've just started spinning. And this is Red Eerie. And they are so different. The brick is a little bit hairier. They both have just incredible sheen. Um, and the brick you can see is it's sort of got this like almost like a crimp to it sort of the way that it's been processed and, and spun to make the brick. And um, I'm really enjoying it. And originally I was just going to do a couple of small samples and have just a couple of small skeins. But I ended up spinning all of my Muga um, that I had in my stash because um, in July we're looking at silk and luxury fibers for the 51 yarn spin along. So I thought, well... I've got all this silk. I, I would really like to spin it. So um, this is the brick of Tussa that I have. And I also have some Sliver. So I'm going to spin this next. And then I also have some Tassar. So between the... Um, the the um, Muga, the Tassar, the Sliver of Tassa, and the Brick of Tassa. Um, I'll have a really nice sort of um, collection of silks when I'm done because I've got the Red Eerie, I've got some Bleached Eerie, and I've got some um, Red Eerie that's not this red, red, red color. Um, so I'm looking forward to sort of having these yarns side by side and comparing and contrasting them. Now, one thing with the Muga, um, I finished it in water that was a little bit too hot by accident. I didn't realize it was so hot. And it kind of ended up having a bit of a suede, a suede effect. Um, and so actually what I'm going, going to do is next time I'm down on Granville Island, which will be sometime this summer, um, I'm going to um, get a little bit more of the Muga um, and spin it again and just not finish it in quite so hot water. That was my fault. Um, our tap water can be very, very hot, even though we turned it down. Um, so uh, yeah, I just didn't realize, but just beautiful. Isn't this Red Eerie gorgeous? And this Tassar, the peduncle Tassar, it's almost got like a bit of a wooly feel to it. And uh, yeah, the group of ladies that I've been studying with um, for this silk, um, there's a, a small local group um, that we've been looking at all these silks together. And, um, oh, it's just been amazing um, to see everybody spinning and spinning everything and having, you know, similar but different reflections. It's been really, really cool. So the brick has been um, really enjoyable. I'm really, really loving it. The Red Eerie, I think thus far is my favorite. It's the hardest to spin, but I'm enjoying it the most. And I'm, I've been kind of saving the Tassar. So hopefully I'll have that all spun by next show, um, only because um, our group will be finishing up. So I want to have them all done. So that is my priority this week. Yeah, we can totally do that, Wendy. Would love to have a long draw long draw show. Always love to watch you spin. Thank you, Becca. That's very kind. Oh, and congratulations to Loreline. I think it was Loreline in our group. Or was it Lauren? Uh, on her new flat iron. Um, congratulations for, for that. So I finished my wool pool. It is here. <laughs> this spun very, very much like uh, Corey Dale. Um, this was part of the wool pool. It was Spunky Eclectic Club from, I think it was April or May, Chasing Rainbows. Um, just a really mindless, fun spin. The yarn came out to be uh, a heavy sport, light DK, so roughly 12, 12 to 13 wraps per inch. You can see the amount of uh, barber pulling. And um, I ended up, because my Lendrum bobbins are quite small compared to my Magicraft bo bobbins, and actually because this yarn has so much poof, and floof. Um, it's not particularly sproingy. Like you can see, it doesn't have a lot of elasticity, um, but it, it has a lot of, of um, um, air in it and it's very bouncy. Um, I ended up having to apply to two bobbins. So I've ended up with uh, with two, two skeins, but that's fine. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, I actually kind of thought it would be kind of nice to save it. I had talked to in virtual spin group, the group of us were talking because I was applying it during group 
I actually said to them that I might weave with it and make a scarf um, because this would weave up as a faux plaid. And so I thought that would be kind of nice, but I got, I have to get stuff off my compact first. My Leclerc compact, which is a 24 inch wide weaving loom and it's on casters, so it moves. Um, it has 11 yards of tea towels on it right now. And I actually knit off two tea towels this past week. Yay! Oh. Um, but I need to weave those off and get that get that loom empty because my jack loom is empty. Um, but I don't know what I want to put on it next. I'm kind of, I wanted to do some more tea towels. Um, I have a lot of 2-8 cotton right now and I wanted to weave off some more tea towels for um, gifts coming up. But I'm also kind of wondering if I should look in my hand spun stash um, and pull out a whole bunch of yarns that have been in my stash for a really long time and do a set um, so a, a weaving set that's kind of like gauge, but in weaving. Um, so in knitting, you know, we talk about like, you know, stitches per inch and rows per inch. Um, and in, in weaving, we talk about ends per inch and picks per inch for your weaving set, S-E-T-T. -T. Um, and I was sort of thinking like if I pulled out a whole bunch of yarns, um, and arranged them in a way that was sort of like, you know, maybe a 45 inch wide blanket of some kind and maybe weaving through some of my, some of my stash. Um, I had thought about that. I didn't want to put this yarn on the jack just because of the amount of waste um, that you lose off the back of the loom. Um, so yeah. Oh, Becca's spinning peduncle herself. Very unique texture. Yes. It's a little bit woolly, isn't it, Becca? Um, sort of has a has an interesting interesting feel and now Becca I'm wondering um, how you're spinning it are you doing like a continuous backward short forward long draw what are you doing very interesting I really liked spinning it continuous backward um, and of course like like my, most silks it can take a lot of twist um, so it really has a beautiful beautiful look to it now the other yarn that I finished this past week was my yak silk. It's finally done. Oh, so uh, this took forever. I'm not gonna lie. Um, this is roughly an ounce and a half. It might have been, two, yeah, it was about an ounce and a half because of course the camelids, because it's 50-50 yak silk and the camelids and silk have a really, really, they're very, very, very light, um, very lightweight. So you tend to get very, very high grist. Um, which is yards per pound or meterage per, per kilo. We tend to use yards per pound here in North America. And um, I just, um, I got this spun, I got the single spun. And then I don't know why, but I just could not find time to reel off the singles and get it plied. Like I just, who, who knows why? No idea why. I just could not find the time. Um, so it sat on my fat core Mazure craft bobbin for quite a long time. And then I really needed that bobbin emptied because I wanted to keep on spinning uh, for my for my silk group. And, um, you know, it was really funny because I finally was like, you know what? I'm going to do what I never do with these types of fibers. I don't like making center pull balls with these. Um, but I just thought I have to get this plied. So I made a center pull ball with a... Uh, toilet paper roll and uh, I put it onto my onto my ball winder and I wound it off made it made a center pull ball kept it intact with the um, with the toilet paper roll because um, the single slid uh, off the toilet paper roll quite nicely from the inside and the outside and I could kind of hold my thumb inside the toilet paper roll and I took my steampunk which is a Schneider spindle uh, drop spindle. Um, it's a sort of a plying spindle. It's got like this gear head on it, which is really awesome. And I took it to the park and I plied it and I plied it. It took me almost all afternoon. I don't know what the finished yardage is, but oh my goodness, um, it took forever. And it's super shiny and it's beautiful, <laughs> but it took forever to ply and I wouldn't have gotten it done. Honestly, like we were meeting friends because things in BC now are opening up. We're into stage three. 
and we were meeting um, two of my really good girlfriends and their kids at the park and we had sort of a socially distancing play date and the kids were amazing. They were really doing well playing together and staying apart. It was really quite awesome to see them be able to do that and take that on. Um, and us moms were able to have a really good visit for about four hours and that's how long this took to ply. Um, and I mean, you can just see the, the luster and there's obviously no elasticity, the yak and the silk. There's no, there's no um, stretch um, or memory. But look at this drape. It's just got this beautiful drape. And when you run your fingers, if you take your um, pointer finger and your middle finger and you run it along the yarn, the hand of it, it's so soft. And it's got a really lovely, um, how do I describe it? It has like a, like almost like a feel, like a matte feeling kind of to it almost. Um, there didn't, I didn't feel any Saracen when I was um, spinning the silk. It just really drafted beautifully. Um, but it's just got this lovely, lovely look to it. I probably would have plied it with a slightly tighter twist angle. Um, there is a little bit of a halo from the yak. Um, it's quite even overall considering I spun it from the fold. And um, yeah, I think I would have just put a little bit more twist into it because it could have handled it. But I think it's also just a really lovely yarn. Now I was thinking some of these yarns that I've been spinning, so this one, the Muga, um, some of the other ones that I was just showing you, the Red Eerie, etc. I think I'm going, when they're all done, I'm going to lay them out and figure out the yardage of each and wind them up into into balls um, and sort of get a, sen get a feel for what the actual um, yardage is. And then I actually thought what I would do is choose a couple of shawls that feature two or three colors that are knit from that are patterns that are designed in linen or 100% silk or 50-50 silk wool blends so shawls that are meant to be knit with very little um uh, memory and 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 uh, uh elasticity because shawls that are knit in 100% wool and shawls that are knit in linen and silk are very different in look and they're much finer as well. And so I thought, well, if I could find a couple of shawls that would actually feature all of these yarns that I've been making and um, work on that sort of slowly through the fall. Actually, it's kind of too bad that they won't all be, well, they might be done. Uh, for our trip in August, that would be great truck knitting because I can sit there and follow a chart and actually like get a substantial amount of knitting done. So that might actually be a good goal to have as I spin through all of these luxury yarns and then I have those two yarns that were the yak the camel silk from west coast color and I thought about um I had thought about weaving with those two yarns but um I don't know I might see if I can find a couple of a couple of shawl patterns that would feature feature these yarns now the last project spinning project that I'm working on is just this plain white boring boring organic uh, Polworth and I'm hoping I've got this big bag of it I'm not sure how much in terms of grams I have I've got quite a bit um, but it's gonna be a three ply and actually I'm spinning it to match this organic Polworth here that was our breeding our last breed and color study um, see so these were all of the yarns that I made from our last breed and color study and um, I'm actually hoping um, that all of this white organic pull worth. I might dye it. I might ask Katrina to dye it uh, to match a couple of the colors. Um, probably the blue, the blue or the green. Um, and then I can um, work it all up into into one big project or or a couple of projects. So I am spinning that in the background. Um, I haven't been talking about it very much, but I have been working on it slowly but surely. Oh, hi, Elaine. Good to see you. Peduncle is the name for the little stubby bit um, the caterpillar makes to the attached. Oh, yeah, we should have explained what peduncle is. So the peduncle is um, where... Let me just come back up here for a sec. So the peduncle is where you are actually making um, 
uh, the, the, the caterpillar makes a cocoon and, um, the, off of the, off of the top of the cocoon is a little stem and that stem, the, the caterpillar makes it, um, the pu pupa, pupa makes, um, they actually attach it to a leaf or a branch or the, um, trunk of the tree. And they tend to put it somewhere where they're sort of hidden in the foliage of the tree excuse me, sorry. And, um, um, that little peduncle piece, um, the caterpillar spins and then they start to spin their cocoon. And, um, you, that peduncle piece can be pulled apart and can be spun. Um, it can be carted up and it's sort of like this rough, I don't actually, I had a little, my, I have a, an example of peduncle, but I have it over on the other side of the room. And I don't think that I have, um, a piece of it right here. I did have some to show you. Ah, I do have it. Okay. So I thought I did. So let me just put up the other camera again, because you'll be able to see it a bit better over here. So this is, thanks for your patience, you guys. Okay. So this is a peduncle. So this is a Tassar cocoon for Tassar silk. And you can see all that color and you can see where it's been split, where the, where the lar where the, the moth has emerged. And then you can see that peduncle. So that's the peduncle. And this is where, and it's like a lasso kind of right up there. And that's where it attaches to the tree or the branch or a leaf or something. And the, the caterpillar makes, the, the pupa makes, makes their cocoon from there. And then this is actually what peduncle actually looks like. So this you can see right in here where my thumb is, just wait for the camera to, to focus. You can see that there's sort of that circular piece there that's the top of the peduncle and it gets sort of fuzzy and you can see the beginning of the stem there. Oh, it's right, right there. And this is all peduncle um, that's been carded and pulled apart, teased apart and opened up. And isn't that an amazing amount of fiber? Like from this to this. Hang on, let me get it centered on the camera. It's hard to, to um, center things sometimes. So that's the peduncle and then the, the carded peduncle. Isn't that cool? And then the, the fiber that I have, and uh, Sanjo Silk carries this fiber here in Vancouver. This is a combination of Tassar Silk and peduncle. So it's actually carded, it's actually um, prepped um, together. So it's not all peduncle, um, but there is peduncle in this. Um, and this is the, the cocoon and the, and the peduncle attached to make it. Isn't that cool? We always talk about cool stuff on the podcast. <laughs> so, um, so that is that. So I hope that that is clear as mud because silk spinning is like a whole other, other topic and it's a whole other like area of exploration. And I'm just now, you know, almost for almost 14 years into my spinning career, if you will, getting into sort of silk and understanding about silk and understanding some of these other fibers. And, you know, I think for some who are newer spinners, um, it's really very cool to see um, these fibers and to, to know that they exist and that they're out there. But you don't need to put a bunch of pressure on yourself to start spinning all of this stuff. Um, just, you know, sort of know that it's there, know that it's out there and kind of file it away for later. Um, because it just becomes really, really overwhelming. And, you know, I think one of the, the, the important things about spinning, um, when you're starting your sort of spinning career, if you will, is to be sure to, um, you know, take on what you feel like you can and sort of leave the rest acknowledging and knowing that it, it will be there. Um, it will be there. So, 
Okay, let me show you my made with love along and then um, and then we'll uh, say goodbye. So this is Be Fabulicious Yarn uh, from Crafty Jacks. And um, I just have to uh, focus the camera a little bit. So just give me, give me a quick chance here. And I'll move back a little bit so that you guys can, um, can see me. So, my original plan with this was to um, put pearls on. Um, but I'm actually thinking I've got all of these buttons in my stash that are sort of this brownie color and I have more than enough for this project. And so I think I might actually sort of pivot a little bit and put on these instead um, because they work. And how many other times in my knitting career am I going to have a project where the buttons match so perfectly <laughs> and I don't have enough of the pearls. I would have to buy some and Getting stuff at the store right now, as you guys know, is quite challenging. And they're the perfect width. So um, I'm going to I'm gonna sort of put those on instead. I lost the chat because I closed windows. So, um, yeah. So this is kind of how it's, the body's worked up. Like I said, I sort of wish I had put um, a little bit of increasing um, down in the hip area. Um, because it is a little bit tight around the hips. But on the other hand, when it's not buttoned, it has a really nice drape. And of course the button band's folding under right now because it's not washed and blocked. Um, but you know, it kind of has a nice, a nice look to it in some ways when it's just left open, which is how I wear most of my stuff anyways. And um, this is it from the back. So it's got a nice, a nice feel. Um, it's a little bit longer than I had originally planned um, because I had to, because the button band is knit at the same time as the sweater, which I don't really like. I would rather do it later. Um, I had a button band, a button hole right here, and I couldn't finish it without kind of creating another button hole, like one last button, you know. So I did the last button. So the ribbing ended up being a little bit longer than I had originally planned, but that's okay. That's the uh, bottom of it there. And uh, the back of the cardigan is actually really quite quite lovely. My mom says to me yesterday, because she came with us on our hike, she's like, does your sweater have a huge hole in it? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, well, but there's a big hole. And I said, yeah, and, and I can't find it now. But it's just where I um, finished one ball and needed to start the next. So I said to her, yeah, I'll just weave in the ends. It'll be fine. She's like, but it's got a big hole. <laughs> it's like, oh, mom. Because <laughs> she's not a knitter. She's a crocheter, but they attach yarn differently. So that's that. I'm into the second ball now, which, of course, you guys um, sort of probably figured out from, from yarn being attached. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to wearing this. Um, it actually, it was funny because when I was um, looking at it this morning and putting it on my dress form this morning, I actually kind of was like, oh, I wish, like, it would be nice to have this because uh, it's it's kind of um, the perfect cardigan for right now with something like what I'm wearing. So, uh, oh, I thought things had, um, had uh, frozen. I was like, no, <laughs> please don't have problems. So yeah, thank you, Sabella. I think it'll be a nice, it's not going to be a cardigan that I'm going to button up anyways. So I think it'll just fall. It'll kind of be like my Lady Marple. It'll just be worn open. And um, I really like wearing my Lady Marple with this because again, it's a color that I don't usually wear. It's not a great, great color for me, that one. This one is, obviously the brown is, is a good color for me, but my Lady Marple is knit in like pinks and, and reds and oranges. But it's just a really fun cardigan and I just wear it open and you know that'll be the the case with this one you'll be able to see the yoke and it'll just kind of hang it'll be kind of you know just uh kind of to keep your shoulders warm so hopefully um um I'll get lots of wear out of it so yeah where's the back of the 
Oh, that's neat, Linnea. So she had some silk moths as pets for a while. That's very cool. I know people have talked about, um, have suggested, there's a really great website, uh, Wormspit dot com and um you know he talked there's one post on there i read it years ago about um like keeping silk moths silkworms for um and having them as pets for kids um the problem is getting the leaves so and i don't know if the kids would be that interested in it after a few months like i'm not sure they would be really that interested i might be wrong but um i don't know there's so much stuff out there and so much for pe for the kids to do and once they're back to school, of course, things are going to change again. So, all right. I will just want to thank you guys so much for uh, being here. Thank you for um, uh, participating in the chat. You guys are uh, just always so full of questions and, and excited. And I'm just really, really happy to be able to uh, be here and to serve you. Um, I hope that you guys um, are enjoying your 51 yarn spinning and um, all of the exploration that we've that we've all been engaging in the last couple months. Now that we're into fiber variety, which is sort of towards the end of our study for group A, it's certainly um, very interesting. So I'm glad that you guys are, are excited about that, same, same as me. Um, have a wonderful week. We don't have any additional streams happening this week. We don't have the wool stream, um, but we do have, um, after this, we've got our queries and explorations group meeting in an hour um, uh, on Zoom. And we have our virtual spin group at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. Now, the week after, for the next couple of weeks for virtual spin group, we'll be meeting a little bit later because I have to drop the kids off at school at 9 a.m. So I'll come straight home and then we'll we'll start spin group. So it's going to be meeting just a little bit later for those three weeks. And um, queries and explorations, we're going to meet um, at least once during the week um, in July while the kids are at school. So we'll talk about dates later, but just be aware if you guys could keep that in the back of your mind. Um... We've got our regular live stream schedule. It's posted for July. If you want access to the uh, calendar for those who are patrons, um, there is a pinned post at the top of Patreon um, in your posts feed. And it's got the access to the calendar on there, like the like a Google calendar with all the dates and times. And then the index is linked there as well and the How I Spin a Sock Study ebook. So that's all there and it's pinned at the top of the post feed. So if you're wondering where that is or if you can't find it, just send me a note and I'll point you in the right direction. So I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome week. Spin all the things for Tour de Fleece and until next time, I will, uh, I hope you just have an awesome week. Oh, and happy Canada Day and because that's July 1st and happy um, US July 4th. What is it? I'm, actually, I'm totally drawing a blank. Happy July 4th for our U.S. Um, um, neighbors. Um, and until next time, happy spinning. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.